Welcome to the Card Subject to Paint to Change podcast for the week of May 9th, 2020. I'm Austin. And I am Jimmy Jam James. And I'm Ed. And Can you tell we're making this shit up as we go along? <laughs> and we love I am Jimmy maybe Jam one James. Day, I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day we'll make it through an episode where we not only don't mess up our... don't make our intro sound amateur like an a- amateurs but also don't joke about how amateur we are in the intro we fucked up we fucked up no i i think it's a good way to go about things think about it like uh the best friends play guys used to say uh we promise nothing and deliver less <laughs> that's a great tagline can we steal that without getting copyright sued <laughs> We already have our catchphrase, I thought. We fucked up? We fucked up? The Anything can up. happen, because the card's always subject to change. Oh, that. Yeah, that works, too. It's been a bit. Uh, it's been a quick second. It took a while. I think it's been... Uh, it, it, it's been a week since we recorded an episode, but the last episode went up late as well, so it feels more like two weeks. I think it has been two weeks. We missed last week. Oh, right. Yeah, it has been two weeks. Exactly. Since we recorded. We also Anything. cannot count. So, yeah, we got we got a good show for you today. Um, the title of this episode being The New Beginning of the End. Bro. Which I guess we'll get to. But, first off, there's, oh, wait. James, Ed, anything? Yeah, we're good to go. I announced the main event. Oh, yes. Uh, the main event, as picked by, as as picked by James, is James. It is John Cena versus Rob Van Dam for the WWE Championship from ECW One Night Stand 2006. Yep, should be a good match. But first, we have. The pre-show. This, this is where we need some sort of like epic, like a uh, transition sound. Pre-show. Yeah. yeah that, just I've some radio noise. That. <laughs> just, just you wait until I start going to college and learning how to do radio or something. I don't know. I mean, I was, I was more joking, <laughs> but if we actually had it, sure. It's too much work. No, I don't blame you. <laughs> Anyways, the pre-show is going to be a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit strange because we have news from two to three weeks, but still uh, kind of. But two of them are a week old. One of them is current, I think. Yeah. With that said, I think the week old news that we have is still it's it's relevant. I think it very much is. So to start, um. Vince, uh, we heard that Vince McMahon himself demonstrated how to fall off a tower. This is from Becky Lynch, courtesy of a Bleacher R- Report article. At least that's what we have here. And apparently, uh, Vince McMahon, who we all know is both Patrick Crazy and uh, Patrick Crazy. I guess. <laughs> no need to say anything more than that. Uh, and he demonstrated he demonstrated how to fall off a tower, presumably um, some sort of Titan Titan Tower. Uh, Pay per view is happening tomorrow as we speak. And yeah, I was gonna say there's there's really two takeaways from this. A. Vincent Mann is a fucking crazy person. And two. Somebody's getting thrown off the building tomorrow. I think your second point was always a given, and this just proves that Vince McMahon always will do things he won't ask his staff to do anything he's not willing to do himself. <laughs> if there's one thing you could say about a good thing you could say about Vince, it's certainly that. Um, but as we're, while we're on the topic, any theories as to who will be falling off the tower? I uh, saw. I saw Adam Blompier had an interesting theory that uh, it would be Otis and. 
which would be sad. Would be sad and would probably cause catastrophic damage. No offense, Otis. We love you so much. If there's one person who could fall off a tower and, uh, and uh, not take much damage, and it is it is Otis, though. So, Oh, he'll be fine, but the ground will not be. There'll be a giant crater. <laughs> Here's my theory going based off that logic. Maybe Otis doesn't go down, but Tucker does. Because they yeah, want him to show us as a singles guy. <laughs> it's like, well, Tucker's <laughs> dead. <laughs> okay, but counter theory, AJ, Lo- AJ Styles is still alive after the Buried Alive match. You think the person who falls off the tower is still going to be dead by the next Raw? It's going to be shame. <laughs> it's going to be shame. I kind of hope he kind of stays off TV for a while. I think he's, what, 50? He also should not be on television at this well, time. It's hard to get back on. T- it's hard to get back on TV after you've fallen off a dang tower, unless your name is AJ Styles. Well, Actually, he didn't fall off a tower. He got buried alive though, and he's still alive somehow. Although he's, he's a good shout. He's in the Vince McMahon club of retcons. I mean, Vince, Vince blew up in his limo, and then, I mean, that's like, kind of an unfortunate incident, but still. Wacky vid stuff, which I feel falls into the category of this story. Makes sense. But now, speaking of Becky Lynch, who reported Vince McMahon uh, demonstrated how to fall off the tower safely, she's apparently going to join Batista as being a WWE superstar in the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. Uh, reported, reported by Pop Culture that she might be appearing in a Marvel movie upcoming soon. Well, I, I will say that this is still very much rumors and such, but it appears she is moving more towards the acting thing. She's now working with uh, The Rock's agent, which is uh, pretty telling. She's been getting advice from Rock and John Cena. Yeah. And let's be fair, I think Becky Lynch absolutely could play a character in the MCU. Uh, I'd be curious to see who. Hopefully someone interesting, but yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. I mean, so far, uh, when I've seen Becky Lynch in stuff, like I watched the clip from Billions, and well, uh, this isn't a great example, but Marine Six, because I watched Brian Zane's review of that. She's been Becky Lynch playing Becky Lynch, but it, it would certainly be interesting. I could I could totally see her in the MCU, um, being like some be. I'm not sure what role they have planned for her, but I could totally see her as like someone who would be working with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier or something like being a terrorist or whatever. I don't know. But, it, it is very weird that you know, whenever WWE creates a really transcendent talent like The Rock, Cena, even Hogan, they all try to go to Hollywood and now the same thing's happening with Becky Lynch. Oh, you mean like in a, in a world where they're less likely to get horribly injured and make more money? I wonder why they would do that. Yeah, no, it makes no sense whatsoever, but it, it's just it's very perfect, weird. It's also the perfect heel turn. <laughs> Unless your name's John Cena. Yeah, somehow he called The Rock out for being a part-time movie star, and yet, now that he's a part-time movie star, he's still face. What the hell, John? Well, I don't know. In that feud, I'd argue Rock still felt like a face, too. So, And he certainly got his comeuppance for it. For it in uh, the recent uh, Firefly Funhouse match, he's booked like a face. He's never treated like a face. Not recently, anyway. Well, during the period of Lol Cena wins, he was totally not treated as a face. Which we're actually going to see in the main event tonight of Cena being a face, but totally not the face. He, he, uh, he, I think he, on this particular like, show for that particular night, he was not a face, yeah. but. <laughs> But yeah, uh, in the overall story at the time, he was a face. On that night, he was not. At that point, he was just John Cena saying, okay, you guys don't like me? Well, then screw you. I'm not going to pander to you, which is kind of... Well, he leaned into it. He knew yeah. the situation. Save it for the main event, guys. Yeah. <laughs> We've gone ahead. But yeah, Becky Lynch in the MCU. Could be good. Could be bad. Hopefully Very good. Work. Certainly worked out for Batista. He's my favorite part of every movie he's in, arguably. Speaking of being on camera, JR has is supposedly temporary temporarily relocated 
so that he can return to Dynamite. As we saw on this past Wednesday, he was there. And yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I I don't mind J.R. on commentary a lot of time. He actually did well on Wednesday. I liked most of what he said. But yeah. I do. He's no I man. I mean, Dynamite shouldn't be running live in the first place, <laughs> to be blunt. That's problem one. <laughs> Yeah. They shouldn't be a, they shouldn't be allowed to have it in the first place, really. That's like, pr- that's problem zero. Yeah. Nonetheless, it was a good show, and I I I can't lie. I've been I I did feel it felt really good and put a smile on my face when I heard when I heard uh J I think it was Jr or Tony say. Like the three amigos are back or whatever about them all being on co- commentary. It, it get it put a smile on my face, but I also like I kind of think that yeah, it's too soon. Like that kind of moment, it it, it was always going to put a smile on my face. It just should have happened later because just hosting Dynamite currently it's kind of unsafe. And I mean, I understand that the wrestlers and some people and people want to work and that no one's being forced into it currently, but the company should do a better job of keeping their employees safe. They did say they would test it, but they also said they were uh, observing social distancing, which if you watch the shout of them say that they were observing social distancing, they were totally not. I don't know. Yeah, pine- yeah, Pineapple Pete. Six feet, brother. I mean, especially at the end of that uh, that main event, as entertaining as it was, as much as I love that ridiculous cartoon moment of Sammy Guevara running and then getting ran over by the golf cart, that crowd of fucking people. Whether they're plants or actual people. No. (laughs) Anyway. What about, what about, uh, yeah, the people, I, we have no clue why they were there. Like they shouldn't have been there. But I mean, so I, th- I think originally I took them to be like fans that showed up, but I think they were still kind of inside the building. So I think they might have just had way too many people in the building in the first place. <laughs> Which, uh, I and then they all bunched up. up at the end of that. And you see my point. <laughs> Respecting social distancing, my ass, JR. Also, Matt Hardy. Uh got thrown into an ice box and then came out as the mask. Yes, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that was yeah. I think he changed th- two or three times, maybe four times during yeah, the match. He came out as Broken Matt, or one form of Broken Matt. Then he gets, pretty much he gets, he fights backstage with, I think, Jericho. Then only Jericho comes back. Then a bit later, he comes back as old school Matt Hardy, which is actually probably the weirdest of his three outfits when you think about it. <laughs> in, in 2020, <laughs> yes. That's weird, but yeah, B1 is the weirdest. They do, they do their whole thing. They end up, he gets thrown in the ice chest, more fighting. He then comes out of the ice chest in a third costume. As Damascus, yeah. I do, wonder, I do wonder what it's like for people who don't know who Matt Hardy, what who Matt Hardy, or what Matt Hardy has done over the past few years. Like, I mean, obviously it, it was weird enough when Impact was doing it, WWE did a bit of a better job kind of introducing it into the programming. But I feel like Dynamite has not done a great job of explaining who Matt is or, or like why Matt is like this. But yeah. it, I, mean, I mean, it's one of those things, though. It's It had its intro on Impact. It's had its intro on WWE. Eventually, the character just has to be a thing. And that's one of the things about wrestling. None of us got into wrestling at the beginning of wrestling. So there are things that we just had to accept. It's like, I, that's how that works. I guess when somebody hits the ring ropes, they somehow bounce off them and have to run to the other side. Exactly. <laughs> there are so many things that in wrestling that... Because like nobody starts from the beginning of wrestling, that, that you're just like, I... All right. <laughs> that works. That makes no that, sense, but okay. And you have to, over time, kind of piece together old things. Because like I said, uh, when everybody starts wrestling, not every storyline's just started. Things have happened. And not everything. Matt Hardy gets thrown into an ice cooler. He turns into Damascus. 
Yeah, and not everything is explained on show A. Sometimes it's explained on show B. Maybe a little bit on YouTube. Maybe a little bit on Twitter. Maybe there's a Reddit post. You gotta look, especially in this day and age. I don't think you necessarily have to look. I think even without context, the Matt Hardy stuff is entertaining. It's just batshit crazy and hard to understand. Yes, and actually look it up. It's still hard to understand because it makes no fucking sense. (laughs) But that's (laughs) even if you have the info. Let me be clear. That's the beauty of wrestling. Half the time, it's so batshit insane that you don't know what's going on. That's why we love this shit. It's like I'm not saying like um, research is required. I'm just saying sometimes you just don't know everything and just like, all right, he's a crazy person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, also, just like I feel like we are kind of at the end of the pre-show. Uh, thanks for those thoughts, James. Those were th- that's a good way to put it. Um. I just wanted to ask you guys, did you guys see uh, Karrion Cross's entrance from NXT this week? I have not. I did. I did. It was actually, it was fucking cool. It was really fucking up. cool. It was a bit weird. Uh, there was some singing portions that kind of were, why is this happen, happening along the lines of what James said? But damn, what what a what a entrance. Yeah, I might uh, I might send you a link after this. It, it is it is yeah, genuinely cool. I'll give them that. Anyways, that's it for the pre-show. And now it is time for the opener. The following match, set for one fall. One, one fall. fall. Special attraction tag team match. Um, this is. The first match I've nominated, I nominated this match. Uh, this is the first match on the show that I have not watched a minute of. I have not watched any of this. I just thought it sounded like a cool match. It is from the new beginning USA 2020, hence the, uh, or maybe 2019. I, I might have gotten that wrong. I don't know. Uh, 2020. Um, I have the video up here. Day four, specifically. Okay. Um, it, it, it's from this that uh the new beginning of the end the, that's part of our title comes from but anyway i've stalled long enough it's the match between the rock and roll express ricky morton and robert gibson versus toru yano and boom boom cult cabana and this this one's- is a hell of a match to have in 2020 even if you oh, don't yeah. know these people i don't think either of us intended to cut you off there just that this sounds insane <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is a pretty insane match, especially in 2020. Um, it's on YouTube, so you don't have an excuse. You don't have to give WWE ten dollars. You just get to watch. You can just watch a match online for free. Indeed. Yeah, this should be a weird match. I mean, the Rock and Roll Express speaks for themselves. They're tag. They're tag team legends. They are also old men at this point. <laughs> When I heard this match, I thought it took place in mid to early 2000s. Nope, this year. <laughs> I mean, we saw, we saw Ricky Morton do a, uh, I think it was Ricky Morton, do a Destroyer on uh, AEW Full Gear, which is kind of a requirement from any AEW show at this point. An old guy has to do, has to do a Canadian Destroyer. Or okay, Destroyer but some type. I don't know yeah. wrestling, <laughs> but apparently that move, uh, the person receiving it, does most of the work, right? Am I wrong on that? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's more stress on uh, the guy. I'm, I'm not saying that it's more stress on the guy itself. I'm just saying it's a requirement of an AEW show for it to happen. Yeah, I still love the move, but I, I will say it, it has gotten to the point where it feels like the move old guys do to prove they're still cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it probably the young person taking it or the person who's receiving the move is actually doing ninety percent of the work, while the other guy is kind of doing ten percent. Again, not research. I don't, complain, I don't think just a statement. He did do a suicide dive afterwards. I don't know. Yeah. I just think it was a very cool moment. All right. Guys? Yes, it was. Agreed. And I mean, Toriano and Colt Cabana uh, is a very fun. It's a fun. It's a fun team. Toriano is always a win, and so is Colt Cabana. So, without any further stalling, uh, let's watch the match in. Three, two, one, go. 
considering how small everything is, this I am pretty sure this was a tour show, not like the one of the actual big events. Because it's actually like pretty indie. We were talking about the internet before. I feel like the internet is a big reason why uh, New Japan has gotten so popular in the States. And especially like Yato. Yato is just a, it's a internet legend. Yeah. Would it make sense? I actually There's saw Yato, and sells DVD. Sorry, Ed. I saw the clip of um, Moxley and Moxley Shudo versus Yano and whoever he was teaming with in the G1 Classic, where Moxley was trying to buy the DVD during the match or the beginning of the match from Yano. <laughs> oh yeah, that just hit. This is that just hit Reddit again. James, how or not James? Ed, how how much have you seen of Yano? Uh, I definitely. Definitely that one one video that I just saw today. <laughs> um, probably not much more than that, to be honest. To be fair, I've probably seen more of Yano than I have of the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, same here. Same. Obviously, Colt Cabana is now on AEW, so I'm watching more of that, so I've seen enough of Colt. Yeah. I know that Ricky Morton turned heel and was Richard Morton as part of the York Foundation in WCW. That's about it. I believe it. Which one is Ricky and which one's Robert? Uh, I believe Ricky Morton has the blonde hair. I might be wrong. Yes, Ricky Morton has blonde hair. Okay. Or bleach blonde hair, or dyed blonde hair, or something. The lighter color hair. Yano does not like their music. No, I think he was the the chance. Oh, okay. Because so they were chanting for the rock and roll, and not him. Ah, fair enough. Could be wrong. Yeah, does Coca Banda have boom boom written on his uh shirt and in, in uh in, I guess I, I don't know what the actual name of the written language is, but does he have it written in, in that language? That would be my guess. It's two of the same word. What are those two of the same word is Coca Banda gonna have printed on his singlet? Well, probably. Next, that would be Japanese kanji. Yeah, I didn't think of that word. The, the second word, not the Japanese, the kanji. Yeah. I'm not even 100% I said that right. So. I'm not the one who actually knows how to say that word correctly, and if it's wrong. Well, I will say, I did enjoy um, Yano and Cabana arguing about who would start the match. It's always classic when... Uh, Two singles competitors cannot really get along in tag wrestling, but they still can kind of get along. High fives. Nice. Hey. I like how the the official was so serious and annoyed annoyed that he did the high five. <laughs> if you don't want to be in, go go inside. Retag Cobana. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. 
I know some people say the uh, experienced tag team should always win, but uh, I'm I not certainly sh- say Yato can uh, can uh, argue against that. I, I don't know if the Rock and Roll Express should should technically win this match, given their age. Well, I think it, I think it makes it at least makes sense for Yato to be in because I don't think any old I think I don't think these guys would know anything about what Yano does. I'm not sure. Why did he go to the turnbuckle? He's a bit of a coward. Uh, Also, sometimes he will literally pull the whole pad off and swing it at people. It's his signature spot. Yep. Not sometimes, it, all it, the it, time. Essentially what he was just doing with the ropes like most people do, but against the turnbuckle. Yeah. Is that how wrestling works? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm questioning how that works. <laughs> Would it hurt less if he so ran into Colt? It's Yato. <laughs> what in the world is going on? Yano is pretty much just the guy the guy from the video for from for all star. Okay, that's that's clever. Rock and roll never dies. Very true. There it is. There he goes. Get it. There go. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that only works with a Japanese turnbuckle. Well, I mean, you can take it off, take it, take the turnbuckle off in America, but yeah, but it wouldn't make a bat. Make a bat? No, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> Bring him closer. <laughs> you can do it, Colt. Yano believes in you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I like how serious this ref is. Somewhere Jim Cornette's having an aneurysm. I think Jim Cornette is always having an aneurysm. Okay, not wrong. We need to watch the match with uh, Kenny Omega and a child. <laughs> Watch parts of it. What did you just say? The match with Kenny Omega versus a child. Anyway, it's a thing. It's it's the match. Um, uh, Cornette always uh brings up when he yells about Omega. <laughs> Seriously, uh, oh my gosh! It is a match. I might but bring it out at some point. Oh, I just realized TJP is on commentary. 
Oh, shit. He did not know that. I think that's what he said. Well, no, I heard... Fart. I heard TJP. Yeah, the, the, the higher-pitched voice might be TJP. Could very well be. Oh, wow. I prefer to think that Yano is the, the spiritual successor to Eddie Guerrero. I, I, Yano's fun, but he's he's nowhere near as cool or as good as Eddie, to be quite honest. And I don't know much about him, but isn't... But I do much? like Yano, let me be clear. <laughs> More in terms of the live sheet steal sort of thing, like, he does a lot of that stuff, like, He's a he's a modern wrestler who I think does that the most. How old is Yano? And that's the traditional Yano finish. Yeah. There was something about a schoolboy just to set up the other guy to pin him. <laughs> I mean, the opponent never expects it. Yeah. <laughs> There's something also, funny to me about them stopping for selfies. <laughs> also, the, be- the best signature pose in wrestling. I mean... Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> It gets funnier each time. He takes like two steps, does the pose again. <laughs> takes like two steps. Does... Good and shit. I, I also, also Yato, Yato always has something he's doing. Like I remember one year in the G1 during the press conference, he was going about how he, he's gone straight and he's not going to do any, any, any cheating in the G1. And everyone just looked at him funny. <laughs> There's also a clip of him coming up with lyrics for Okada's theme. But yeah, that was uh, the Rock and Roll Express versus Yano and Cabana. Very, fun. Very silly. Very standard Yano. Yeah, that is TJP. The biggest surprise of this match was TJP, in my opinion. Not that he was, like, great on commentary. He was just there. Yeah, it wasn't bad either. Did his job. Pretty standard Yano match. I mean... Yeah, it was fun, though. It was a good match to start with. Very energetic match. Get your pump, get your blood buck going. Yep. And our, fir- our, first, our first New Japan match. Indeed. Actually in New Japan. Or Japan. It wasn't in Japan. No, I believe that was... that took place in America, but it was a New Japan match. But mm-hmm. in Japan, it's a technicality. Uh-huh. Anyway, well, that was a great pick, Austin. Thank you very much. When did it was? Now, yep. speaking of Eddie Guerrero, <laughs> oh, yes, my pick of the night. From Halloween Havoc 1997 at WCW pay-per-view. Eddie Guerrero, the Cruiserweight Champion versus Rey Mysterio, who is putting his mask on the line. Uh-huh. Uh, I've not seen this match, but everyone always raves that this is one of these two's best matches that they've had in their entire career, let alone just against one another. And I don't... I- and I don't think the fans know how many falls this match is set for yet, though. Nope. That's <laughs> one problem with our joke, is we don't know if it's actually true or not half the time. Go back and watch the first uh, match we actually watched. We thought it was a ladder match. We still said the joke, but actually it was not a ladder match, but it was kind of a ladder match. Um, and then this but that time, said, say the words. <laughs> We didn't even do it. Yeah. <laughs> Championship match versus mass match is scheduled for one fall. One, one fall. fall. That took a bit. <laughs> also That's said match okay. twenty. <laughs> we gotta anyway. keep guessing, guys. 
Anyway, everyone ready? We are starting at zero zero. This match is actually on YouTube free of charge. Yeah. James, you ready? I am. On go. Three, two, one, go. What the heck, Ed? You did ask me if I was ready. I was ready, by the way. Just this just wanted to bring I heard, you, I heard you clarify you were ready before I even asked. Fair point. Okay. I gotta say, that Rey Mysterio outfit is very purple. Yes. This should be good. Did he say, yeah. I want your head? Probably. Or mask? I don't know. Probably mask. That would make sense considering the mask is on the line. Now, I will say this match should be really good because this is WCW's Cruiserweight division, which is their best wrestling they had. Holy hell. This is off to a flying yeah. start. Indeed. I mean, it is also Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio. Oof. Oh, fuck. Ooh, God damn. Out of the spot, I have. Mm. Who says a start needs to be slow? Tony Schiavone on commentary. Oh, there he is. Good old ski zone. Is there uh, Dusty uh, on commentary? Shivani is on commentary, yes. Oh, no, I was saying Dusty. That sounds like Dusty to me. Uh, if, if there's Dusty on commentary, you will know it's Dusty. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that is Dusty. <laughs> oh god that almost looked like a match but it, it, I don't think it was <laughs> it was yeah, I think it was just counter. an interesting kind of cool looking move it, it was a counter yeah he yeah. was going for the handspring back elbow I think but Eddie kind of reversed it got out of the way and delivered that hmm. I like that when he did the two, he was he was doing like the rock and roll hand signs. Commentary really big enough, Eddie. Which, I mean, makes sense, but. This is a very good match. And it is. It's interesting. The, the, the singlet actually works a bit less well as a mask. Like, I could actually see part of his face in the, with that one. Okay, but Eddie was just ripping at the eye hole, which probably makes it bigger than it actually was. Maybe. That looked more like Eddie was pulling him up, but yeah. The crowd does not like Guerrero, that's for sure. As they shouldn't. <laughs> no, no, they should not. It's a 
championship versus mask match, and it has and it has Rey Mysterio in it. No fan should want Rey Mysterio to unmask, even without hindsight. Oh shit! That, oh my god! That was awesome. From 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 the ground to that, Jesus. Did he just kip up onto the top rope? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. I think he did, guys. Ooh. Dude, I I love how he got caught in the ropes for a second. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, and You know, I think one of my uh, favorite, uh, like, little stereotypes in wrestling is the technical master, like, a technical master class cruiserweight who doesn't go on the top rope in a cruiserweight division. Like, you know, like the Drew Gulaks of the world. Yes, yeah. What anybody is doing right now, what Neville did when he was heel, where he would rarely do it right arrow. Yeah. I, it just wor- it works really well. It does. Yeah, there, there. Yeah, you get. Yeah, oh, he. There it he, is. Yeah. He made, he made the mask less. Uh, yeah, he made the mask like that. Gosh. I mean, heels ripping at masks has been a thing. Oh yeah. Oh, but but that, right, that's, right. Why the, that's why the face is so exposed, though. It's because he was ripping at the mask. I don't know if it was and actually. Ray, Ray's doing a great job with his facial expressions. Uh, yeah. It's true. He really does look pitiable. I don't know. Well, now I know why it's called the Gory Special. Was well, created by Eddie Guerrero's father, the the legendary yeah. Gory Guerrero. I think. Yeah. I mean, I already knew about Chavo Guerrero Senior because of the Mountain Girls wrote a song about him. Oh yeah, I've heard of that song, but I don't think I've actually heard the song. Good song. And- Good wrestler, also a good video. It has it has the man himself in it. Is that is that guy who going wild in the crowd have a Papa Sh- Papa Shango sweater? Maybe this was the nineties. <laughs> that would be my favorite piece of nineties merchandise. A Papa. I didn't see it, but I I would believe that. <laughs> He had like he had like Dudley style glasses, and he had a bald head and a Papa Shango sweater. Classic Eddie Guerrero trying to cheat his way to a victory. Yeah, agreed. With that said, you'd think Guerrero would be smart enough to do it, literally not immediately in front of the ref's face. Yeah, that's the only issue I have with that one. Like, what are you trying to do there, Guerrero? Really should have just titled this episode the dirtiest player in the game or something because there's been a lot of cheating on tonight's episode or there will be. I mean, we do have a match with Yano and Eddie Guerrero. What the hell did you expect? We have an EC and we have an ECW main event with John Cena and Robin Bam. Only person we're missing is Ric Flair. Everything but the dirtiest player in the game. Ooh, ow, ow. This I was going to point out the fan with the sting mask on, but Guerrero just took out his family jewels. Right in the Slim Jim. Ow, yes. Good. <laughs> Good call. Okay. That's <laughs> it. In fact, they didn't say that on commentary. Has ruined this match. <laughs> oh fuck! You know the the say. 
I think the signature part of the heel Eddie Guerrero character is the hair. You just mm -hmm. can't like a person with that kind of hair. The the freaking mullet. The mullet, the pencil mustache, the chin strap. You you mean that's not the face of a hero? <laughs> I'm inclined to say no. I'm inclined to agree. Damn. I actually do not I do not know who wins this match. Ray hella over with the crowd though. It is Ray Mysterio Jr. I mean that's a sign of this is a Bit of a never mind. I mean him being Ray Mysterio Jr. is just a sign that it's him but not in WWE. Yeah. <laughs> now how do you guys feel about the uh Slim Jim adverts on the canvas themselves? Should that be brought back now in twenty twenty or nah? I don't need to see it brought back, but I also don't hate it. actually kind of cool. I mean, I get that they'll make more money by having more adverts, but I'm not super fond of more adverts in general, but I don't think it looks bad. Point. I, I think like the things I can think of with that, most most recently, AEW's kind of done it. Like They did uh, Rick and Morty uh, ring posts during the ha Halloween episodes of Dynamite. I mean, they literally had a Cracker Barrel barrel themed match. Yeah, <laughs> and and stuff, stuff like like the adverts here. They don't interrupt the match at all unless you start talking about them, <laughs> like I have. But they don't they don't yeah. ruin the flow. You're just there in the background. You just constantly see some Jim. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I don't hate them, but I also, if you gave me the choice, I would choose not to have them. But they're unless not the a problem wants, either. The advertiser wants them. That was a hell of a power bomb. I definitely I don't think they add. With that said, amazing match happening. Why are we talking about the adverts? Ed was curious about him and how you guys felt about him. I don't know what more more needs to be said about this match. It is really fantastic. I like, yeah. I mean they're great. Uh I feel like the crowd's been cheering a lot more Eddie sucks than Ray, but Ray Mysterio, but Eddie sucks does have quite a ring to it. There they got another cheering for Ray. I mean, they they obviously love Ray. I just was saying, like, in terms of chance, they're saying Eddie sucks a lot more than something Ray Mysterio related. Well, Eddie has been more in charge of the match, so it would make more sense for them to, to try to boo the heel. The frog splash. Eddie has such a beautiful frog splash. Damn, I want this. Frog splash. <laughs> So long since I've seen it, I wanted to. Ooh, ow. Ooh. Ames? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I was hoping you would say your catchphrase. That's totally not your catchphrase because you said it once. Well, the other time you did it, really, literally right into the ring post that looks like and says Slim Jim on it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> but that was still right, the Slim Jim. Oh my god, yeah. this fixed from the top rope. Uh oh. Okay. This isn't the match where he got unmasked. And that's well, it. It's a hell of a match, though. We don't yeah, I knew at some point Rey Mysterio was unmasked in WCW. I had no idea if this was the match or not. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think I think it's a bit too early for that. 97? But I wonder, even though it cut off as soon as the bell rang, is Rey Mysterio your new Cruiserweight champion in 1997? Not losing his mask. Sounds that was a really good match. Lived up to the hype. Certainly. Um, I, I, I really appreciate uh, I think Eddie did a great job, obviously, as the heel. Ray was a very good 
face, uh, had some interest, had some, I mean, top notch wrestling. I think the most interesting spot from like a storytelling standpoint was the tearing off of the tearing off of part of the mask. And like you could actually see Ray Mysterious expressions. And I mean, he was very, he was very uh, pitiable and like it was very easy to root for him. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I was just going to say that. Kip up to top rope. Oh, I would love to see Calendar try that. That would be interesting to see now. Incredible. Yeah. The only reason I didn't say much was just because it was an excellent wrestling match, but it was the old school story. A very obvious bad guy, very obvious good guy, and it was just a good wrestling match telling that story. So I... There wasn't much to add to that, right? The classic recipe. It was super fun. I was happy to watch it. Yeah, the classic classic recipe of the really over face, the really despised heel, and both really fucking good bell to bell. Yeah, they did exactly what you thought. It's a match you could put on Dynamite today, and it would just be instantly like people, it would be an instant main event, like. Yeah, it would have means it would have missed a beat, and this happened more than twenty years ago. Yeah, uh, agree. Twenty-two years ago, Jesus, or twenty-three years ago. Damn, it still lives up though. Very great match. Yeah, and it, it's important to point out that, like, from what I've seen of the cruiserweight division in WCW, that th- this was almost every match. Like, I mean, this was. Not not to put the down on this match. This match was very good and like probably one of the best come out of that division. But every match in this division was just as high was almost just as high energy and and just as just as good. Like that's a real testament to what how hard the guys were working. And also a testament to just how not smart WCW was to keep these guys in the just up on the lower card. Yeah, as the, as the title, out of their yeah, as the world uh, title scene started to fade and turn into the Hogan show, really, in the NWO, the Cruiserweights were still lighting up the show with matches like this. And yeah, WCW was smart. They would have highlighted these fellas and not aging Hogan and uh, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Well, they still highlighted some kind of kind of long, young talent. I mean, you had like Jeff Jarrett and Booker T. But anyway, at that point, I feel like it was too little too late. And also, yeah. it, was Vince, it was Vince Russo at his worst. So, Yeah, there was no saving the sinking ship. Nonetheless, we can still look back at this match and see it as a pinnacle of professional wrestling you, in general. It totally lives up to the classic mon- moniker that it receives. Very great match by these two. You wouldn't expect anything oh, last week. Yeah. But that concludes what has currently been the oldest pick so far of our podcast, all the way back to 1997. Well, hopefully we can get back to some more older stuff. I think there's a lot to learn there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Nonetheless, James... And now, it is time for our main event of the evening, and it is scheduled for One Fall. One One Fall! Not bad. And it is John Cena versus Rob Van Dam for the WWE Championship on ECW One Night Stand 2006. This is being watched on the WWE Network. And it is starts at 2.06.56, um, ECW One Night Stand. If Cena wins, we will, in fact, riot. Well, we won't, but that crowd would have. And sad fact, we just watched Eddie Guerrero wrestle, and unfortunately, at the time of recording the uh, One Night Stand, he was unfortunately not alive. Sad fact. Let's watch wrestling. We can say that for a lot of... Uh, shows, unfortunately. Uh, so yes. Well, on that, uh... Sorry, I made it real oh. sad for some reason. <laughs> uh, no worries. 
Rest in peace, Addy. In peace, Latino. We'll start in three, two, one. They booed WWE Championship. Makes sense. By the way, I really love Rob Van Dam's team. I do. Uh, same here. Oh, I, I don't know about you guys. Uh, I mean, obviously, when, when you're talking about uh, wrestling venues, a lot of things come to mind. Um, like the best wrestling venues, like Madison Square Garden, the Tokyo Dome. For me, uh, the Hammerstein Ballroom will always be up there. It's just not it's, great. It's very distinctive, yep. and it's fine. fine. And I, I'll, I, I very much remember it. When I see it, I'm like, "Yep, this is going to be a big show." Yeah, They're very nice arena. You know. Got to agree with that. Oh, that sign didn't age well. Any sign was that? I said somebody, and I didn't even see who it was, is gay. <laughs> One thing I've always wondered is, why does uh, RVD have an image of Ridley from Metroid on his uh, singlet? Or an at least that's what, what I always Metroid? thought it looked like. Ridley, okay. It took me a second. I don't probably know. I, I don't know if it's Ridley or just like a dragon. Probably just a dragon, but it looks, it looks spot on like Ridley whenever I see it. You have to remember, RVD is very much a stoner, so he likes things that are cool and kind of hippie like that. Hence, he has that yin yang on his singlet too. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I straight up saw an RVD 420 sign. Yeah, I yes, saw that too. <laughs> Mercy, I've seen hot. it. Ryan Riot sits there. That does yeah, look like the guy that does right the air for Rob Van Dam singlets. Only ever did it for one other guy. It was Ryback for some reason. Sponge Fun fact, Daddy. I guess. Sponge Daddy. Well, whenever I've, somebody, I've, bring, whenever somebody seen, brings up... Oh. I've seen two 420 signs, by the way. Whenever somebody brings up Ryback, I'm, I'm obligated to just say Sponge Daddy. Why? Uh, long story. I'll tell you later, Ed. I'll say it's even funnier seeing the crowd doing the motion. It's just a crowd of people doing what is a sped up version? RVD. RVD <laughs> with the thumbs. Oh, hey, I, I do that all the time in my normal life, honestly. Because yeah, I'm probably you do the slow one, but because they had to keep up with the chant. Oh, okay. RVD. RVD. <laughs> it's sped up. What, 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 one fan was trying to slow it down. Yeah. Yeah, it can work. Oh, it was a cool image, and it sounded awesome, too, with the <laughs> RVD chants. It was just slightly funny to me. Watching people do the Rob Van Dam thing really quickly. And there it begins. This entrance, though, of Cena is still really good, though. Not even any John Cena sucks chance. It's just booze. Well, I think this is before the sing song John Cena Sex started. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, but but still your point stands. What a heel John Cena causing seizures and fans everywhere. <laughs> yeah, secret warning if you watch this. If you watch this match, yeah. Not this podcast. I don't know how you could get a seizure from the podcast. Cena does nothing. He normally would high five the fans, but he's just holding the title above his head. Staring straight ahead. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I know where I am. And I mean, I'd argue, like, John Cena in situations like this was at his, was like at his best. Like, he's really, he, even though he's obviously, he's he's still able to play a face in front of a crowd of anti Cena haters. Like he he's he doesn't do anything like out, out outright heelish. He could just get booze. For one acting term, he shows some of his range. That yeah, that's that's yeah, that's 
pretty much what I was trying to say. Yeah. Also, brilliant camera work. Zooming into that sign. <laughs> Cena wins the riot. Arguably, yeah, that graphic. That graphic was pretty pretty cool, actually. I like this ring announcer. I, he he's unique compared to like other ring announcers I've heard. I don't know. I just I do not know, but I agree with that. Yeah, I like him too. Something about his voice. I don't know. Yeah, it works. Got thrown back in. Oh, yeah, the hat got thrown back in. That's what I thought. I, I noticed that. And whoever has the shirt. He's getting throw it back chatted at him. He did. They did it. <laughs> Again, great camera work. God, this is incredible. <laughs> even even Chicago didn't do that, I don't think. Unless I remember. Bear witness. Looks like they're fighting over the right to throw it back. They're sp he's spinning on it and throwing it back, and then he missed. And he <laughs> <laughs> the security throws it back. <laughs> it tells him to go fuck oh himself. Oh my gosh! Oh, uh, this is the best. It's a real testament to the ECW brand. Hey, they did it in time this time. They actually had cups thrown at them. What does DNB mean? Oh, the paper already. Stop throwing chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's still no Dude. Cena sucks chance. Nope, that's, <laughs> really, that's not flying PGA or WWE. Uh, toilet okay. paper, the anti streamers. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, it's the you are shit streamer. I love the ho the ECW hockey jersey the one fan has on, the two fans have on. I'm confused. <laughs> still toilet paper. I'm confused why the re why the mat looks so clean. Actually, yeah, why is that so clean? <laughs> I mean, it's, if it's anything like WWE usually does their shows, they have like five mats, and then between each match, they just take one off. That's what I assume. <laughs> but are they chanting Cena swallows? Yes, yes, they are. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, it sounds like easy W. They say as the man it executes a suplex. Uh, I liked seeing his reaction to the you can't wrestle chance. He just had for a split second, it's like fucking really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though the man can actually wrestle. He is good. Hey, these fans were ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, this is great. <laughs> I like when he as those chants are raining down, he reaches up, inches his uh, mouth, and on his arm band is, you can't. I mean, as far as you can't see me, but. Yeah. Uh, look at the look at the two little kids up on the top deck. Yeah. Poor guys. How have I never seen that before? You mean the Inzagiri into the foot thing? Uh, Miss Inzagiri into a uh, heel like yeah. that, yeah. And that's a classic uh, Rob Van Dam spot. He does it all the time. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't watched that that. Rob Van Dam. I'm just surprised that oh, no God. other, like, no other wrestler has done that. Or I don't know. Whole fucking show. Whole fucking show. Whole fucking show. Yeah, I'm surprised I don't see that one done all the time. That seems like an easily copied one that not too many people have copied. Mm -hmm. It's probably for the best because it would get a bit annoying if it was all the time. But yeah, you're right. I'm surprised I haven't seen that stolen more. It is a very classic RVD move, a very vintage move, if you will say. It is very fun. It's kind of funny to me. Uh, RVD is like such a symbol of ECW, especially later on. But like, I think the, like one of the most memorable phases of his career was when he was on a team with Sabu, and they were heels talking about Monday, who were represent, who were like representing Monday Night Raw or whatever. <laughs> Unless he's certainly not that at this point. D has always been a very good wrestler, though he does get himself in trouble with the weed and all that. Oh, yeah, he's totally a great wrestler. Same old shit. That's some good stuff. I'm actually surprised I haven't heard that chanted at Cena more. Or anyone, really. And I like Cena. So I'm just... He, uh, at this show, I've seen, I've seen so many ECFNW t-shirts. I feel like it's the predecessor to just a bowling club t-shirt. <laughs> kind of. Just the t-shirt that every wrestling fan wears at this point. Pork! I think, table. That, I think that's Chekhov's table, which I'm not entirely sure why it's called Chekhov's table, but that's what it's known for, I think. That's the that's the timekeeper's table, or it's got the championship on it. Yeah. I mean, I could I explain do. why it's called Chekhov's table. But... Yeah, I was going to say, you don't know about Chekhov's table? Or Chekhov's I heard of uh, Chekhov's gun? Uh, I, I've heard of Chekhov's table, but not the gun. So Chekhov's table is an, based off the name Chekhov's gun, which is <laughs> yeah, come on, comes an old term for like acting and such, and it's the idea of if there's a gun on screen, at some point somebody's going to shoot it, or right, on stage more, or whatever. Right? Uh, more specifically, it's if a gun is introduced in Act One, then like in Act Three, it's going to be used. Yeah, pretty much. So okay. I'm not sure if that counts as Chekhov's table because we did get to see it ch set up. Nonetheless, that's just... Well, that said, it was set up. It's probably been set up all night. Ah. Because <laughs> I don't think either of these two set it up. Yeah, but it's also a table that they would have under the ring. I think that kind of suggests that it's already been put... Someone's probably already been put through it. It is an ECW show, after all. There's probably been a couple of broken tables. Yeah, probably. Also, from a John Cena perspective, hey, Sabu was on the show. There's been broken tables. <laughs> That's actually more accurate. If Cena is smart, why? he would jump the barricade. Nope, he's jumping the barricade. That's not why, a good move. Why, well, I was gonna say, why would John Cena throw RVD into a raging R ECW crowd? Not, 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 not. See how aggressively the the uh, um, security has to hold them back. Yeah. I love that Cena used the fuck you Cena sign to block RVD's yeah. face. 
vision. Yeah, no, that was clever. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. And then, uh, ow. Just very much ow. <laughs> not, not the worst um, barricade spot I've seen. Yeah. That honor also, would go to Daniel Bryan diving onto a guy at a, or Brian Danielson at that time, because it was an RRA show. He does a dive and he pretty much lands direct, his head lands directly on a chair, which is hard to watch, especially knowing yeah. what we know later. Yeah, ow. I will say, while he did the thun sing, the crowd seemed split between r chanting Rob Van Dam and chanting whole effing show. I think RVD <laughs> like himself. Half half. I think RVD himself. What's the difference? Uh, no difference. He's synonymous other than... with it. Yeah, he, it, it's both. Here is the chairs. Where is the ladder? Ow. Did that he was even also... hit the chair? Ah, uh, kind of. That's kind of a vintage RVD spot, too. Okay. Got kind of a chair surfs know. and then pushes it into the face. Yeah, RVD does a lot of stuff with chairs. I think the la the least ECW thing about this match is the fact that it's Extreme Rules. Like, if this was an ECW match, there would be no need for you to say it's Extreme Rules. <laughs> Fair it's, point. It's an ECW match. It isn't Extreme Rules. It isn't Extreme Rules. It's, it's implied already. You know, rolling, you thunder. Hit the rolling Thunder. That never happens. No. <laughs> he never hits it? Huh. I really... I mean, even, Rarely. even I, even I uh, Rob Van Dam Neophyte, knew that was in his moveset. I guess he just never hit, but he doesn't hit it. Apparently. Oh, no, he goes for it all the time. It just rarely yeah. actually succeeds. Probably because it's a very easy move to counter. <laughs> yeah, very no, it makes sense. It's a move that has a fuck ton of setup, is blatantly obvious that he's going for, and can be countered by rolling away. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, the five-knuckle shovel, the shuffle gets hit a lot, as does the people's elbow. <laughs> Yeah, you're comparing. Not, you're comparing never. You're comparing The Rock, John Cena to RVD. You see a problem there? Yes. Yes. I, also, I, yeah. I, I, also, I, the more hard objects that. he puts in place, the less likely he is to actually land on the guy and just land on the hard object. <laughs> it was even more surprising yeah. that he did it to the chair. <laughs> as as you said that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That was an ugly looking DDT. I'm sorry, but yeah, but realistically, if the DDT is ugly, then it's probably more effective. Probably means he got yeah. chopped off better. I was about to say Cena's cheating. He's using the ropes, but this yeah. is no DQ. <laughs> that definitely got him more heat, though. Yeah. Happy birthday, Erica. Yes, happy birthday, Erica. Happy birthday, Erica. It's on the uh, Puerto Rican flag. It's written on there. Enough. Oh. Ooh, wow. No man can throw himself into a chair quite like RVD. I guess. So there was the classic uh, Joey Styles, oh my god, chant or uh, call. Oh, 
่าวค่ะ That's sort of a Cena sucks chant. Also, was that the loan up in the in the press box area? Is that what in the press box? Loan. Like the actor. I don't I won't, I won't think that you could see a fan behind him and look like Stallone. I don't. I can't remember. Stallone. Stallone. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't remember his first name, but it looked like the actor. Sylvester. There we go. Oh, the smirk there was perfect. I know. Uh... Beat it on the chest. Ooh, that was a horrible salute. Like, come on, man. He's rubbing it in. He's doing every pose he has. <laughs> yeah, it's just like spamming the taunt button in wrestling games. Hey, it's still the FU. Ow. That looked good. RVD bumping his ass off. Yeah. I'd be there. <laughs> you still <laughs> suck. You still suck. Like, are they just talking about the fact that he actually pulled off a move that they thought was impressive? Also, I look guess. at the guy with the Jewish, uh, he has like an it looks like an XFL jersey and it says Jewish on it. I mean, considering some of the names in the XFL, that might have been an actual XFL <laughs> jersey. He hate him. That's looking interesting. That's almost like an atomic drop on the ropes. Or I, mean, like I, mean, that, but... I think he's trying to set him up for something and it just didn't work. <laughs> works how here we go here's the tables I said, ref, like, why the fuck are you bringing the table in? Ref, do you know what you're working for tonight? <laughs> I, well, my internet died on me. No, wait a second. Is everything all right? Internet died on me briefly. Okay, where are we on the, the match? Um, I am not quite sure. I'm fast forwarding a bit. Uh, did Craig go out of the session for you guys? No, he's still here. Okay, he disappeared briefly for me. Uh, for our viewers, Craig is our recording bot. Yep. Thank you, Craig. Yep. You cannot respond. If he does not respond, the robot takeover has occurred, and we are all dead. You are watching this. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. 
Please don't kill us. Thank you, Craig. (laughs) Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Time for the match. Um, twenty thirty two thirty thirty seven. Thirty thirty seven. Okay. Two thirty seven. Two thirty thirty seven. Oh, okay. Okay, just when RV, RVD put the table into the ring. Okay. Yep. Count us down. Three. If we're already. We two, already. Okay. Yep. Three, two, one. All right, go with. Apologies for the te- technical difficulties. I was scared that Craig had stopped recording because my computer had lost internet. I'm not sure, but yeah, he he should be uh in the Discord call. He should have to do the command to get him out. Yep. Okay. Okay. SCF. You. What is it with seen on FU? Well, I will say it, STFU. Shut the fuck up. It kind of fits, but yeah, the FU nice. the FU started when he was feuding with Brock Lesnar, so it was a play on the F5. I think everyone calls this move the STFU. No, it was originally it's the STF, but he called it oh. the STFU as John Cena because he already did the FU and STFU is shut the fuck up. Yeah. All right. I will say Cena should learn how to lock that move in. Hello? 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 Yeah, we can Hello? Hear you. Something happened? I, I paused. My, my mic changed. Okay. I paused keep, it. Keep, keep, keep it going. Okay. Uh, Ed, did, Ed, did you stop it somewhere? or? Yeah, I stopped at 231.53 because I thought you were uh, dying again. All right. Oh, no worries. I'm at 231.53. All right. Just let me get there. It was just as the ref was breaking scene off of RBD. All right, I'm there. Austin, you're there? Um, yes. Okay, in three, two, one, go. So many technical difficulties. Sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between. It's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna like happen. we say, the card is always subject to change. It's going to happen every third episode at this point because our first episode had it and now this episode has it. Good night, ref. I like the ref getting. Oh, Cena showing no fear. Also, I just realized we did not see Eddie Guerrero do a frog star, five star frog splash, but we probably going to see RVD do it. Well, Eddie Guerrero would never do a five star frog splash. He'd just do the frog splash. Which is the exact same move. Just I know they're the exact same. It's just RVD's what RVD does. V does a frog, frog splash. It's a five star frog splash. When anyone else does it, it's a frog splash. Yeah, but we didn't see the frog splash from Guerrero, but we're gonna see it from RVD. No, we're gonna see a five star frog splash from RVD. Why would RVD oh. ever do a normal frog splash? You know what a spot I haven't seen is I haven't seen somebody get suplexed onto. An upside down set of steel steps. I don't want to see that. Yeah, but you got to imagine some crazy bastard would want to do it. Like, why has Joey Janela not done that? <laughs> Probably because someone saying was like, Joey Janela, fuck no, absolutely fucking not. I don't get it. Why? Why? Why do you guys? Why are you guys under the impression that Joey Janela has not done something? That's be fair. He probably has done it. But... <laughs> he probably has exactly. Wait, I, I don't get this. It's a... He's a Raw superstar. There's a... Pinning an ECW guy, and it's a SmackDown ref. Because he's the guy that happened to be available, and he's a WWE ref, so he seems... Okay, yeah. Like the heel to the crowd, right? Yeah. To the ECW guy. I just think it's funny that it's Raw Smack... Raw, that it's a SmackDown ref. Like, he just could have put on a different shirt, guys. Come on. Hey, you gotta stay loyal to your brand, even though it's just one fucking company. Oh, hello. Oh my god. 
He got attacked by Super Biker. Oh, goodbye, other ref. Hi, Edge. It's Edge. I enjoy the neutral reaction for Edge. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Thank you, Edge. He was a heel on the show, though. That. It, it, does, it, does, it still doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. Because he is a face, he's just a heel I mean, I'm sure tonight. I'm sure for more from a storyline. Well, I'd argue he's a face he's tonight because he attacks he Cena. World title. <laughs> Cena is still a face. The face heel the body is all fucked up. I love Joey Styles. We'll take it. Just ECW just does not give a shit. There we go. There's the frog splash. Five star frog splash. Technicality. Buffering. Buffering. Oh. As far as the rest of the Okay, we I paused. paused again. Right when he was about to hit it. 3511. <laughs> Hang on, gotta get there. Gosh darn it. I mean, I, th- I think this. I think just the WWE Network buffers more than. YouTube does. Yeah. To be fair, that's probably it. So, 2.35.11. Yep. Okay, count it down. 3, 2, 1. Okay, there we go. There it is. My play button isn't working now. Are we starting? Are we stopped? I don't fucking know. All right, I stopped. No worries. Technical difficulty city. Apologies to all the viewers watching at home. I'm back at 3511 and it's buffering. Go ahead and try to fix it. You might have to refresh your page. Thank you for the suggestion. Let me know when you're ready. I I guess my internet just... At least my internet is punctual. If if this is going to happen every third episode, we can prepare for it somewhat. Well, it's not just you. It's happened to me before, too. And I I think it's happened with Ed. All right. 3511. From the top. All right. Three, two, one, go. There we go. Finally. I, I, I. I did love how Rob sells the the five star frog Rob, smash. Rob always does a good job of selling it. It's the boss. That security guy looked like the AEW security guy. Yay! Play the game. Fall Heyman counts the fall. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, hold on. He's, he's he's new WWE champion. Nope. As long as RVD is holding the belt, it's the ECW championship. Except he was he also did. awarded the ECW championship. They were separate belts. <laughs> that's, that's why that didn't make sense. <laughs> Still. Great moment regardless. The beast. To be specific, it would be the EC. It would be the ECW Championship for about what, like three days? Probably. Not hold it for long, sadly. Well, he, yes. it'd be three days because he would be awarded the actual ECW title, and then maybe like two weeks later, or two or three weeks later, then he got busted for weed. Ah, uh, okay. All right, this is cool. I haven't seen this celebration before. That's nice. I've actually never watched this match before. Same. I have. This is one of the matches I have actually watched, and you two have it. Wow. 
<laughs> with that said, I knew it was Edge. Like, I, I knew what happened. I'm confused. What's up with Big Show? He was a part of the roster, I believe. There are a couple uh, of you guys. In, I think in earlier in the night they had a battle royal or one of the shows where they were mixing up WWE so as they were leading in to WWE CW. Uh, Big Show turned on WWE and joined ECW. Yeah, I just noticed that Big Show was just staring down Rob, and he's still doing it, see? Yeah, because I think he was still a heel, and I think he was the oh, first okay. main challenger in WWE CW. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can see Kurt Angle there. Uh, le- le- a legendary match. Yeah. Um, very good match. Absolutely. I, it was very good. I think I, I kind of what kind of spoiled it for me was I just seen so much of this match as part of like YouTube and stuff. I never actually saw the full match, but there wasn't a lot to it. There wasn't a lot more to it than what I'd already seen of it. I mean, same here, but it was still cool. It, yeah, no, no doubt. It was, it was still cool. <laughs> A very good match to watch in hindsight. It may not be the best technical match ever, but it's still entertaining as all hell. Yeah. And Cena just disappeared. That's kind of smart. <laughs> Makes you believe. Rob's feed makes is pretty believe. good. It is. Though, because it was ECW, it would have been better if he had walk. <laughs> Just for this show. But I do love this song. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh. Uh. The beer in the face. Yeah. And it's ECW. And Sandman's there. Yeah. I see, man. I look in your eyes. Still going. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> His first and only uh, WWE championship run, and I think only world title on WWE. Probably. Yeah, suck it in. After the Money in the Bank, he won Money in the Bank, correct? But this was his cash in match. Yeah, that's what I thought. I love that. That's not world title, though. This is world title. <laughs> Great match, though. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I thought that was a good pick. Yep, certainly main event caliber. You did forget it that that match existed when you said you were picking a John Cena match, though. After you just like listed every other John Cena match. Like it could be this, it could be this. And I'm just smiling. I can't help but laugh. Um, the official time for the match is twenty forty. This this clip was like thirty four. 34 minutes. There, there's 14 minutes of celebration and other stuff. I mean, it makes sense, but yeah, that's equivalent to the Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio match that we watched as part of the mid card stuff. <laughs> oh, it's still worth it to watch her and finally see that stuff again. At least for me, legendary moment in wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something special about them throwing John Cena's fucking shirt back. Yeah, that over. was that was like, that was great. Like four fucking times. And just how how over it was with the crowd. 
I thought you screw with the uh, wrestlers in the ring. No fucking beach ball required. Truly, uh, this was truly the last stand for ECW because after this will come WWE, ECW, and I mean we we were talking about this before the show. The one night stands they had after this were not good and also weren't branded as ECW. No, they were not. Indeed, this was the last EC. This was the last um ECW one night stand and. I mean, it's quite a high note for them to go out on. I'm not sure if I like it as much as uh, the ending of One Night Stand 05, where they just fight everyone. They fight Raw and SmackDown and then just have a beer bash with Steve Austin in the ring. Which is a very good one. I'm, yeah, both are very good endings. I, I, like, I prefer that show as a whole more than this one, but, I mean, you can't, you can't beat this match. This was a really good match. Perfect, perfect story. Like, not a lot of, I mean, not much more storytelling than just everyone hates Cena and Cena play, playing up to that a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But the one thing I will say is I don't think it needed Edge, but it was yeah, still. There doesn't always need to be like much of a story for, for it to still hit you. Yeah. That's still. why. So, since this is the end the end of ECW. That's why it's the new beginning of the end. That's the name of the episode. You can also consider uh, Halloween Halloween Havoc uh, 97 one of the last great pay-per-views that WCW uh, put on and that that was the sub decline, decline of that brand as well. Which also ties Man. in that title. course not none of us were around during wcw's rise and fall so we're speaking from yep them. Yeah, I, that. speak for yourselves i was one <laughs> we're the same age. 97 yeah james is old actually i wouldn't have been one yet <laughs> yeah no i would have been uh 10 months <laughs> i would have been negative three negative four years old And on that note, it's time for the dark match. Sure, is not any more personal info we want to put on the internet. I mean, our ages is really. Not we can we can, we can give the uh, give our uh, social uh, social security numbers out. How about that? I feel like I already <laughs> mentioned my age. No, I'm kidding. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, the dark match this week's picker was Ed. Ed, what did you pick? The following match is scheduled for one fall. It is a triple threat. One fall. <laughs> one fall. It is I'm a doing this now. This is, this is cool. <laughs> I decided to do this. Uh, this match is to decide what is the best championship design in wrestling history. Or what is just the three bookers' favorite championship favorite. design. Yes. And mine is a very classic design that is actually fitting with my pick this week. It is the big gold belt, whether that is the WCW World Heavyweight Championship or the World Heavyweight Championship in WWE, the big gold belt just screams world title. It's a big hunk of gold. Uh, it's very large, very heavy. You see it around guys' waist like uh, Hulk Hogan, Batista, Edge, Triple H, Sting, Flair. It just How screams did it world champion. How did it take you that long to say Flair? <laughs> they literally named a pay-per-view after him. It was Flair for the gold. Fair enough, but again, not a WCW baby. Question, do you prefer the WCW version without the nameplate or the WWE version with the nameplate? I'm more used to the nameplate version, but I can take or leave the nameplate. I do prefer the nameplate. I think I prefer the nameplate to what WWE does currently, where they have the two side plates, which is nice, but I kind of prefer just the nameplate. Fair enough. Well, but I think yeah. the original WCW one had neither. It was just the big gold belt, and there wasn't a nameplate on it. Yeah, I'm more familiar with the nameplate version, so I'm probably going to go with that one, but I yeah. do not own the WCW version at all. But yeah, I mean, it's it's really literally the same belt, belt, just with or without the nameplate. It's a valid answer. Also, at the peak of the belt, uh, WWE version has their really? logo there as well. That is one way you can easily True. tell besides the nameplate. 
But yes, that is my favorite belt of all time, the giant gold belt. Very simplistic design. I'm a very simplistic dude. Makes sense. You guys don't have anything for me. Uh, yeah, I didn't really have much more to say. Did you guys have anything to say about the big gold belt? I mean, there's not much to say about it. It is a big hunk of gold. It's super ornate, and it's it's beautiful. It's a it's a classic for a reason, and I completely get why it would be anybody's pick for this. It also looks really good on most individuals. There's very few individuals you can make a case look horrible with that belt. I know a lot of people, like we just watched uh, the spinner belt, many people say it only looked really good on Cena. Maybe a few other names. CM Punk comes to mind. Speaking oh, of my pick. I swear to God, if you pick the spinner belt, you're getting out of this ball. Okay, I had two answers. I had one that was more of a direct answer and one that had a very specific caveat. And the one with the very specific caveat and the one I'm going to go with just because it's more interesting, though the other one's probably my real answer, but this one's more interesting to talk about is, yes, the spinner belt, but only on Cena. <laughs> <laughs> with the asterisk held by John Cena. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> it looks fucking ridiculous on anybody else. But with John Cena, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's the John Cena championship, and it suits him perfectly. It, yeah, it, it was like the smoking skull belt. It was supposed to be a custom title, but nobody changed it back. When Kofi won the I title, agree. He it should have changed. Yeah, it absolutely should have been changed back. But with that in mind, know. with on John Cena, it looks amazing. <laughs> it just only so looks great on John Cena. I don't know. I think I think the one case that maybe it was warranted was when Miz had it and he just oriented it upside down all the time. Like that I mean, was that kind of clever. Makes sense, but Edge I agree. Did. It, it doesn't work on anyone else. Edge, Edge Edge replaced the spinner with his logo, but the rest of the belt still didn't really fit Edge. No, no, it didn't. Actually, I, it kind of did because it was the most excessive gaudy thing ever. And <laughs> what else would it fit Edge? To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, I do not hate the belt. It, most of my time watching WWE was with this damn belt, but it's not the best belt <laughs> at all. I, I said specifically on John Cena. I have a better answer, but I thought that would be more fun for discussion. So that's the one I went with. For sake of curiosity, what is your better yeah. answer? What is your problem? Um, I'm not going to say it in case you say it. That'll bring it up after. Well, fair enough. But your joke answer, or at least the more talk answer that has well, been. I stand by it. On John Cena, it belongs on the list of some of the best belts ever. On anyone else, it's god awful. <laughs> for, for sake of curiosity, what was your other? Um... He's gonna wait until you make your pick, just in case you picked his belt. Okay, yeah, sorry, y'all were y'all were y'all were cutting out for me. No worries. I was very tempted to hit the disconnect button on you because I do have that ability. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, that's that's a thing. <laughs> that was an answer. Eh? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my my pick. Well, this this was kind of hard. Um, I I want to choose like I like a lot of championship designs and belts, but I wanted to choose something that I've actually like seen. So. Like like something that's actually from the era that I that I've like watched wrestling. And I mean there's there's a few like classic belt designs. Like I, I really like the old IC belt. I thought white, that was pretty white, the white strapped one that was the recent or the previous design. The the white the white strap. The white strap, like I mean that's just like classic. It's my I second mean, favorite belt. It looks good on anyone. Pretty nice. Really good on Miz. Really good on Miz. Looks good on anyone. Yeah, um, it's a good belt. But when it when it came down to it, I wanted to choose something with a bit more flair, and so I opted for one that I noticed that I noticed uh, this week when I was watching Quizzle Mania on uh, the Parts Fun Known Parts Fun Known series, and that is the UK. The UK Championship um, that WWE recently instituted. The men's I, or women's? Um, 
meds. Because every single test the UK has is pretty freaking great. Yeah, it's um, I think it's a good combination of what we all know, like a WWE championship in the 21st century to look like. Like it looks like a WWE championship, but it's got its own flair. It's got the UK symbol there. It's got some more unique uh, flair around the nameplates. I, I will say best. it is basically the UK pound coin put on a belt with the depending on how old and recent you're looking at the design, you have the WWE or NXT symbol in the middle, and that does look fucking beautiful. Just putting the pound coin on a belt. Yeah, is again UK has a lot of great championship designs. They yeah, did. y'all y'all are cutting out for me a bit. Sorry about that. Uh, We're mostly just agreeing with you. It's a very nice yeah. belt. Go go ahead and try. Disconnect and rejoin. You should not kick Craig out because Craig has to be kicked out separately. Okay. For the people at home, you will probably hear hear Austin drop in, reconnect. Hello, do do. So apologies. For that. Hello, are we any better? Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, I just like the design. I'm a UK. I'm a UK mark, so it it fill, fills my quota for that. You have no objections from us here. The UK does have a lot of great looking belts. They did a wonderful job making them both look the same as the United States ones, but different enough where they aren't the same at the same time, if that makes any sort of sense. It's very, very nice. Cool, cool, cool. And I will say and... the Austin title have also been a good shout, as that is my second favorite title, in case you heard me cutting out when I was saying that. I heard you. I heard you. Yeah. The other belt I was thinking of, and this was my more straightforward, this is just a beautiful belt, is the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, f- fucking beautiful. That makes a lot of sense to my brain, knowing you. Yeah, that is a gorgeous title. Actually, I don't know my New Japan that well, but it's a beautiful belt. It's beautiful, <laughs> it's iconic. It's, it's basically the Japanese... Uh, si- it's basically the Japanese World Heavyweight Champ. Like it's it's the World Heavyweight Championship, but for IWGP, and it looks just as beautiful. It's a very similar in concept. I personally like having a bit of silver in there for some color contrast. <laughs> but I, or it might be it's white gold, but the point stands. It's, it's different color. It's not just a big gold belt. It's personal thing. Also, every champion's name is on there, which I think is an incredibly interesting oh. detail. Yeah, uh, they they do that. With you, this can, you can do that. And and you can do you can afford to do that with the IWGP belt because it's just that prestigious. Like you aren't gonna have like six million names on there. It's so prestigious that they can show a slideshow of every IWGP champion before before a match and like have time for it. It's a really well respected belt. Yeah, yeah. I am curious what they will do once they have inevitably they must run out of space eventually. Right. I probably do what the Stanley Cup does when they start running out of rings and they have the people off. It just goes into the uh, Hall of Fame for the National Hall- uh, Hockey League, which I know uh, New Japan doesn't have one, but they could have something similar to that where they just save them and store them properly. In order uh, to it's just... Them. Yeah, yeah. They're on their ser- Naito is the 70th person. Uh, 29th unique... 29th unique man, to, unique person to hold it. There's been 29 different people to hold the belt. I do like how New Japan doesn't it don't just call their heavyweight title New Japan's heavyweight title. They actually have the pseudo government, the IWGP. Yeah, the IWGP. I always I always I, like that as well. Same. It confused me at first, but when I realized what it was, I was like, oh, that's actually really nice. I like that. So now that we've uh, gushed about New Japan and just belts in general. I feel like this is... Does, does Jamie have anything more for his belt? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, James. Well, my pick was still... I, I went with the spinner belt just for the conversation piece. <laughs> but you wanted to hear about what the other one I thought about yeah, was, so that yeah. was that. Both are... Well, one of your picks is really good. The other one... <laughs> <laughs> Keep the belt. It's just not the best belt. <laughs> I appreciate uh, the conversation piece, though. As a quick once comment, again, 
like I I entered it with the asterisk on John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> that is important. So quick overview. That's the big gold belt versus uh WWE spinner belt on John Cena and the WWE UK championship. Uh, if people actually vote on this, I'm screwed. I might have had a chance if I put the WGP belt on there. We still yes. have that. I think you're fine. Um, <laughs> as a quick as a quick aside, um, this is random, but Ed mentioned uh, I Ed mentioned the Ryback thing, and I said Ed mentioned the, that Ryback was the only other person to have their tights airbrushed by the, by uh, whoever airbrushed RVDs. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned uh, I, every time I hear Ryback, I have to say Sponge Daddy. Um, that's that's because uh, Ryback did an AMA on uh, R slash Squared Circle where he uh, he he didn't quite understand how the reply function works on Reddit, and so he just posted a reply on the main thread, which led to all of his responses being unattached from the questions. So you just a bunch of out of context answers to questions. And so <laughs> my my maybe my favorite thing on Reddit is Ryback posting randomly with no context whatsoever on the on his on his own name friend, Sponge Daddy. Just the word Sponge Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Good job, Ryback. <sighs> yeah. Ryback is certainly a character. That he is. Oof, that's some way to give yourself a nickname. Jesus Christ, Ryback. Meme me more. I just, I just realized the IWGP uh, world title actually has the New Japan logo at the top. I just realized that. That looks nice. Um, Real quick, I'm sorry, I just got down this rabbit hole. Some other Ryback responses to play us out. As long as the third graders didn't force me to lick, to lick white dog shit after I, after I would take my chances with them. Okay, that's that's a weird stepbrothers reference. Uh, okay. Someone must have asked, like, a, do you think you could take, I don't know, however many third graders in a fight or something like that? And I guess he decided to respond with that. Stepbrothers reference, but that's still yeah. That's donuts, maybe a rice crispy treat. Uh, if you want random shit out of context, just go to the Iron Sheik's Twitter feed. I mean, yeah, there's no context in that. the be- The best thing is that there is a post on here where he actually figured it out. It says, "Hey Ryback, if you were going to tour large towns and cities in Yorkshire." You only had to... Cut out with I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, it's been a long day. Hey, Ryback, we're going to tour large towns and cities in Yorkshire, but you only had two days. Would you skip Sheffield? Oh, my. Fuck. They make the same joke on uh, uh, Up, Up, Down, Down, you know. <laughs> Ryback responded, and he, he actually replied to this one. Yep, yep, yep. What it do? Good God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ryback. And Thank you, Ryback. This has been the Card Subject to Change podcast, where our favorite wrestlers are Ryback and Psycho Mike. Well, that's one of us is true. <laughs> We needed a psycho. We needed a psycho Mike ref name drop in this episode, so I provided us with one. Anyway, oh, well. anything else to add, boys? Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the Curse After Chains podcast. We promise to become slightly less shit with each episode. Slightly. No guarantees slightly. made. Please do not hold us to our word. Okay, I promise to be slightly less shit. <laughs> okay, All right. speak for himself. That's it. That's it. We're done. We're done.